Good morning, Sava here from Football Heritage TV. Good morning from me, probably the afternoon your time because of the time difference here in Cape Verde. Um, where to start? Tottenham are absolutely rotten to the core. Let's, let's not pull any punches. We are rotten to the core, as the title and the video name and the photo thumbnail suggests. We are rotten to the core. I hear lots of fans that say things like, well, but, but, but we could have gone third and we're top four and we're fifth and look where we were in 1990s. I'm sorry, this doesn't wash any longer. 1990s was a long time ago. And even in that decade, we used to pick up the odd trophy every five years. In this video, no one is safe. I won't be going after the fans. I don't think it's fair to go after fans. I, don't, I think we're all suffering in our own way as Tottenham fans. But I will be looking at the manager, past and Stellini. I'll be looking at the owners, obviously, the players and the director of football. Because the whole thing is rotten to the core. Let's start with the managers, shall we? What we saw last night was absolutely disgusting from start to finish. Absolutely disgusting. First and foremost, and I'll call this out again, and everyone can keep telling me that I'm wrong about this, we've gone to three centre-backs playing against a team who are relegation candidates and didn't have a single centre-forward on the pitch. But we've got three centre-backs playing. It is embarrassing. We have a back five with two holding midfielders playing against teams like Southampton, Wolves, Leicester, Everton. It is absolutely embarrassing tactically from managers. Now, you would say that this is Antonio Conte. Now, the reason I'm talking about Conte, yes, Conte's gone. But what we saw yesterday was a continuation of his god-awful, diabolical tactics. Now, don't get me wrong. This will be pointed out on the players in a minute. But at the moment, we're talking about managers. The tactics that Conte and Stellini have employed at this football club are beyond you know, prehistoric. They are shocking. So, so negative. And I don't know a single Spurs... Well, I do actually know a few, but the majority of fans don't enjoy this at all. It's absolutely dross. And I've seen much worse squads um, over my 40 years of supporting Spurs playing better football or at least attempting to play football better than what we're seeing now if we look at the in-game management so forget the fact that we've lined up yet again with three centre halves against no forwards like we lined up with three centre halves against Sheffield United with one 37 year old forward in Billy Sharp now let's look at the in-game tactics poor first half doesn't change a thing in the second half. Nothing, of course. Nothing changes. No youngsters coming on to bring some energy. No bringing on Dan Juma to bring a bit of energy in the forward line, considering Kulu and Son were horrific. We'll come to them in a minute. No taking off a centre-back and putting in Saar in midfield to shore it up. Nope. Same 11 goes out. Anyway, by hook or crook, they go down to 10 men. Yeah? Now, of course it was a red card. Absolute stone-cold red card. Harry Kane's reaction was the height of embarrassment. Absolutely embarrassing. Now, a lot of you won't like to hear that because it's Harry Kane and he's one of our own. He's our all-time top goal scorer. But what an absolute joke. And if that had been a foreign player, we'd all be going, oh, foreign players, they cheat. Absolutely disgusting from Harry Kane. And the fact that he's England captain, embarrassing. But we'll move on from that. So anyway, they go down to 10 men. And you're thinking to yourself, come on, this is in our hands now. This is a team who are, what, two points at the time above the bottom of the league. At home, they're not very good. They don't have a centre forward on the pitch. They've gone down to ten men. Come on, take the game. And I'm sitting there with three or four Tottenham fans saying, right, get a centre back off now. Get another midfield player in and dictate the game. Make them chase, make them run. They're down to ten men. Oh, no, 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 no. Not this Italian connection we've got. We keep three centre-backs on the pitch at all times. For what reason? We get lucky with the goal. We get a penalty. Yeah, it was a penalty. But silly tackle to be made. But we get the goal. We go 1-0 up. Everyone I'm sitting with, and, I'm, and everyone I'm in WhatsApp groups who have said, please don't sit back now. Please go on the attack. They're there for the taking. Ten men, 1-0 up. Go for it. Nope. They sit back. And they sit back. 
and the substitution isn't to bring on another midfielder con to control the game. The substitution is to bring Davinson Sanchez on at centre half. Just absolutely mind boggling tactics. Now, people go, oh, you're not a manager. But I don't think anyone has to be a manager to be able to look at what is right in front of them. That was diabolical in game management from Stellini. And you could feel it again, everyone I'm sitting with saying that that Everton goal is coming. It's coming, it's coming. And it came. Now you could blame the red card that Lucas Moura got, but the fact that they scored 90 seconds after the red card and they've been pushing forward. The fact that they looked like the team with 11 men and we looked like the team with 10 men it is mind boggling. Awful, awful management, awful in-game tactics, awful substitutions. And then, for Stellini to come out after the game and say we played a good game, he should never be allowed in the dugout of Tottenham again after that nonsense, ever. Absolutely shocking, it's literally Conte reincarnated. Let's move on from that. Let's now look at the board. Absolutely disgusting behaviour from our board once again. They had the opportunity, Conte's gone, you've got the opportunity then. You've got a week, 10 days before the Everton game where you're thinking to yourself, right, go out there, get your guy, pay what you need to pay, get your guy, get an idea of what direction you want this club to be going in. I don't care whether that's a Deserby, whether that's you've got to pay through the roof to get um, a Deserby from Brighton or a, a Luis Enrique, or I don't care who it is, a Vincent Company, a Michael Carrick, um, a Nagelsmann. The name is not important at the moment, but make your decision, get your direction and bring that manager in. Instead, we went cheap, we kept with Stellini and Mason, and we get performances like last night. The owners are absolutely horrific, and I wish there was a way for them to go immediately. Some of the worst ownership I've seen, that they've let the club get to this state, where the squad looks this bad, where players like Davis and Dyer have been here for seven, eight, nine, ten years. Son and Kane have even been here eight, nine years. I mean, how long do players need to be here? Lucas, Sanchez, they've been here forever. What is going on at Tottenham? Enoch and Levy have ruined this football club for me from the inside out. And yeah, I think I'm allowed to talk about the players, the manager and the owners because no one escapes blame for me. But the owners simply have to look at this and say, what's our plan? Because this is absolutely disgusting. And Daniel Levy's coveted top four trophy looks very much in doubt for him, doesn't it? Not for me. I don't care if we get top four. I don't see the point of it at the moment. We get top four and we put in performances like we did this year in the Champions League. For me, I think you rip the whole thing up. And uh, people are going to hate me saying this, but my Arsenal mate on one of the Arsenal YouTube channels messaged me earlier and he said, you guys need to do what we did. You need to get rid of all the old guard, don't matter who they are, what big name they are, get rid of all the old guard, get rid of all the dross, and bring in a young manager who's gonna bring in young players and let them build for four or five years. You're gonna be painful for a couple of years to watch? Cool. But build towards something. People will go, oh, but we wanna win. We all wanna win something, but we are miles away from that. If you can see the finishing line, which is winning, the finishing line is 26 miles away in the London Marathon and you're back in Greenwich Park waiting to start. That's how far away it is. Let's be really, really honest about that. Rip the whole thing up, start again. I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I don't care. Bring in a Vincent company, bring in a Michael Carrick, bring in someone young, let them at it. Give them four or five years. Tell the fans that there is a plan. Tell the fans that the plan isn't just top four and they're gonna build something with young, hungry, energetic players that wanna play for the badge. Let's get some legs and youth into that team because it was non-existent. But this is on the owners. The owners have to do that. They have to implement that. At the moment, no manager, no director of football. The owner just wants top four. The whole thing is an absolute shambles. It is rotten to the core. I'll repeat, rotten to the core. Please, <laughs> for the good of the club, could he even leave his sell up? Please. I know it's a pipe dream, but please. Then we look at the players. Absolutely disgusting from 1 to 11. All of them. I'm calling all of them out. Hugo Lloris is absolutely finished. His kicking of the ball is shocking. And the fact that he was brought back in above Fraser Forster is shocking. Forster had actually done pretty well. 
actually better with a ball at his feet than Hugo. Hugo comes in shocking. Pedro Porro, uh, erratic. Um, yeah, he's new, so you've got to give him time, but he, he, he can't defend. He can't defend. Um, good in burst going forward. Not the problem, I would say, but again, it was what was he bought for? Perisic is finished. Absolutely finished. He has been shocking this season. A few, a few assists from corners do not cut it for me. He has been shocking. He has got to go. I don't care if he was given, I think he was given a two year contract. Get that man out of the club. It's a shocking signing. Eric Dyer, another manager with Stellini that puts Dyer straight into the team. Straight into the team, and then we all moan when he makes mistakes. What more can be said about how bad Eric Dyer is? I think I'm being polite if I was to say he's a championship defender. I think that's polite, because when I watch championship games, I don't see the mistakes that Eric Dyer makes. Longley. Surely, surely we cannot, cannot be thinking about signing this guy. Surely, he is shocking. Bullied on the ball, slow, he's, he's pedestrian, he's lethargic, he's lackadaisical, pick a word. He is all of those. And then Romero. In patches he's good. He's rash, he can't stop fouling and picking up yellow cards. He'd be the one you keep, but I've not really been impressed with him either, to be honest. I think so many people wanted him to be this world-class centre-half, and he's not. Hoiberg is absolutely dreadful. I know every team needs a player like him, and I'm not suggesting you sell him, but he's so bad in a midfield too. He is so bad. He's got no ability with a ball at his feet. He's not the problem. I'll move on from him quickly. Oli Skip. If ever I saw a player that should be playing in the championship week in, week out, it's Oli Skip. He is an atrocious midfielder. He works hard. He wants to tackle, he wants to fight. But when he's actually got the ball at his feet, he is shocking. He can't pass. He runs into people. He clatters into people. Shocking. Kulusevsky, another one everyone got so hyped up about last year. Showing this year he's not all that. He's okay. He's good in moments. But now we're seeing months and months and months of nothing from him. Is this the reason Juventus let him go? Hong Min Sun. Shocking year. Again, we got, every time I got the ball, the Spurs fans around me yesterday, it's just like he can't play with the ball. He can't play under pressure. When the ball goes into him, his touch is horrible. He gives it away. He runs into people. He's not the problem, but he's just been awful. It's time for something new, I think. It's time to mix it up, even if that's Kane and Son. Kane, again, was terrible yesterday. The link-up play was non-existent. The, the, the play acting for the red card took a lovely penalty. But other than that, just shocking header in the first half. I think the whole thing needs to be changed up. The whole personnel from top to bottom. From tea lady right the way through to CEO. This club is rotten. Now people might think I'm overreacting and they'll say, oh, we're still fourth. But I don't care about fourth. Just watch what was happening last night on the pitch. It was disgusting. Yet another lead thrown away. <laughs> Yet more bad defending. Not just the defending though, we keep blaming the defenders. Going forward, we look awful as well. Look dreadful. Now, some Spurs fans don't like to criticise, so they'll say, oh, you're not really Spurs. You know, 40 years, but you're not really Spurs. They'll tell me that, oh, I'm negative. But we're doing this every week. The whole thing needs a reset. Enoch and Levy, get out of this football club because you are driving this, this club into the ground. You're not driving the business into the ground, you're driving the football side of the club into the ground. And that's where I think people get confused. All in all, typical Tottenham, shocking, rotten to the core. Hashtag rotten to the core. Let's fight for some change. Let's get these owners out. If we can't get these owners out, let's get these owners to change because this is terrible. There isn't a single player there I'm worried about losing. The whole thing can go. Or get a young manager in that builds with a doji, Porro, Romero, Kulusevsky, Saar, Basuma, Bentoncourt. And get some young forwards up front, quick, with legs that can press. 
but the whole thing is an absolute shambolic mess. That's right, it's rotten to the core.